What does it really mean when we say that all of Internet Computer Protocol is fully on chain? Is it true that there really is nothing else like it in that sense? Let's dig a little deeper and also examine another alternative to the Internet Computer's way of doing things. <laughs> So what is Internet Computer? The Internet Computer realizes the vision of a world computer, an open and secure blockchain based network that can host programs and data in the form of smart contracts, perform computations on smart contracts in a secure and trustworthy way and scale infinitely. Smart contracts on the Internet Computer are called canister smart contracts or canisters, each consisting of a bundle of WebAssembly bytecode and smart contract data storage. Each canister has its own isolated data storage that is only changed when the canister executes code. Canisters are hosted on subnets, the top level architecture building block of ICP. A subnet is an independent blockchain running on node machines, or also called nodes, deployed in globally distributed data centers. A single subnet can securely host tens of thousands of canister smart contracts, totaling in hundreds of gigabytes of memory. There are currently dozens of subnets growing to thousands in the future. Each subnet of the internet computer is its own blockchain that makes progress concurrently to the other subnets. It runs its own instance of the internet computer core protocol stack, including consensus. Recall that the goal of consensus is to produce blocks agreed upon by the nodes of the subnet, which yields an ordered sequence of messages to be executed. This is crucial so that the upper two layers of the protocol stack message routing and execution receive the same inputs in every round on each node. So how does this all translate to being fully on chain? Let's take a look. Okay guys, we're answering that million dollar question. What does it mean to be fully on chain? And why is that significant? Because that's the value proposition that the ICP community continues to push out to the rest of the world. So I think it's important that we're able to explain that and we're able to understand for ourselves because it makes us I think more bullish on the protocol at large. Um, but taking a look at some of these architectural bullet points, uh, internet computer is a replicated state machine. What does that mean? You have your canisters. Canisters are e the analogous to smart contracts. They consist of your code and your state, your code and your data, right? These canisters living on subnets are replicated throughout all the nodes on a particular subnet, right? So keep that in mind. And then you have scalability through sharing in within those subnets. And we have each subnetwork hosts a number of canisters. So we talked about that, but this is the bread and butter. It's kept in sync by consensus. So you have communication flowing from user to canister, from canister back to another canister from one subnet to another subnet. You also, have, you know, we mentioned that where you have, uh, I think that's called, the messages are referred to as X messages that communicate between subnets. I think it's X net or something like that. But all of these are powerful features of the internet computer protocol. But the fact that it's kept in sync by consensus, that is a blockchain principle, right? Having decentralized set of nodes that have to agree that this block should be added to the existing set of blocks. But before we do that, we're gonna have some kind of validation. We're gonna have some type of mechanism by which we agree before we append to the blockchain. So when we're talking about fully on chain in the context of internet computer, it's because what makes that significant is because the underlying infrastructure does not move to the left or the right without there being consensus within those subnets. And that's what makes it significant. Whereas when you take some of the most popular blockchains to date, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana, they have no contextual awareness of the underlying infrastructure rather have a built-in assumption that you're going to be using some kind of centralized cloud hosting provider. In a nutshell, you don't have these kind of infrastructure interactions without there being an agreement from the nodes on the blockchain, right? Um, and here's another example. You have uh, 
some incoming messages in, in the regular web software world, you, you would call these requests and responses, right? With a canister, these requests and responses will involve some degree of node participation and blockchain consensus. All right, here's another side to being fully on chain, right? You have the NNS voting. When you stake your ICP and you vote as a part of the DAO, um, sometimes there's protocol upgrades being proposed and you have two levels of consensus in this regard. You have all the voters reaching consensus, which that in and of itself is a decentralized manner of doing things. But then you have consensus at the protocol level. And we'll just read a little bit about this. So this is a description of how a registry version upgrade would occur in ICP. Uh, but basically after all the nodes in the subnet agree upon the latest registry version via consensus, right? The obvious next step is to switch to the new version, right? So just wanted to put that real world example of fully on chain before your, your ears and your eyes. So with the value proposition as great as the internet computer protocol, along with the rise of decentralized physical infrastructure based crypto projects, also known as DPIN, be on the lookout for projects such as Aleph.im, which will promise to give other blockchains ICP-like superpowers via their very own decentralized computational and storage resource. I took a look at a little bit of what Aleph.im had to offer, and here's what I found. So I think we're gonna see more and more of projects like Aleph.im come about due to the current insufficiencies of existing blockchain technology. Uh, but let's read a little bit about what Aleph.im is all about. The core mission is to help decentralized apps and protocols strip off the centralized parts of their stack, achieving a fully decentralized architecture. Our ecosystem achieves this by providing decentralized databases, right? Think the state of a canister and computation and a decentralized identification framework. Think internet identity within ICP. It says you can think of Aleph.im as a decentralized AWS or Firebase. Heading over to Aleph.im's website, they said they offer cutting edge computing and storage solutions for your Web3 needs. Our unique payment model supports the holder tier, allowing you to use our services simply by holding Aleph tokens in your wallet. And the longer you hold the tokens, the longer you can enjoy the services without any additional payment. So you're getting rewarded for just being a holder of the Aleph tokens. And they just go over a couple things uh, with the Aleph's computer, computing services. You can process data quickly, securely. Um, you can create a function. So in, in the cloud, typical centralized cloud land, you have this idea of these serverless functions and in AWS is called uh, Lambda where you don't necessarily want to spend money on an entire virtual machine but you just want to execute a piece of code and you just want to pay for when that code executes well they have a similar service to that and then they have the full out virtual machine that you can create an instance of the virtual machine and you can create a function to just execute your code out in their cloud environment. And then they have this uh, blockchain indexing feature as well. I'm not entirely sure what that consists of. And then you have your storage offerings from Aleph.im. So <clears throat> when the notion of these projects come up i think it's good for the icp community to understand the difference to me there's nothing wrong with this as a matter of fact i think it's promising although i did find some issues with a left and i'll point them out right now so there was a gentleman that kind of dug into what a left does and you know wanted to really see if he wanted to become an investor so I, I think he asked questions 
to the left team and one of the, the issues he brought up was the cost right he says he i asked Shimo about the cost comparison between deploying on a left that i am versus aws which is a familiar pricing model for most developers and he said uh right now a direct comparison is challenging because the current model requires holding a left tokens in order to get service which is very different from amazon web services and he said Shimo explained that the LF IM roadmap roadmap has a goal to be pretty much on par or a bit cheaper than centralized alternatives like AWS and Google Cloud. Thanks to market dynamics, where providers compete to provide services in the most efficient way. So that was one kind of thing that, that stood out is there doesn't seem to be a strong motivation on their part to beat out the centralized competition in terms of pricing and this one really stood out to me um, so the, the the guy who wrote this article was getting real technical and, and digging into actual deployment of a left.im nodes which as of the last time I looked into it it requires you to hold a significant amount of a left.im tokens but this isn't necessarily about the cost to host a node or, or deploy a node. This is more so about where you deploy the node, right? So he said, in looking at the NodeForge documentation for deploying in a left node, I noticed they are hosting on a multi-cloud infrastructure. Since this frequently means leveraging some mix of AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, keep in mind, these are the same centralized services that we're trying to get away from in a web three world. He said, I asked Shimo how this avoids the same centralization issues face in cloud computing. And this is what the guy's answer was. The whole idea is to have a variety of hosting places and types, he replied. The more diversified the network is, the better. So yes, although it is possible that some may choose to host their nodes within AWS, red flag, Azure or Google Cloud infrastructure, it is also not as bad as it sounds. Regardless, we are creating a diverse, distributed, and non-centrally controlled network of nodes designed to function in such a way that even if one goes down, or even if one of the big guys, AWS example, goes down, odds are high that the others will probably still be up. So to me, this is kind of a red flag because if the majority of people that that per, that deploy a node decide to do so on centralized services, you literally are back in the exact same boat, right? Um, which even though you have this abstraction layer that would be a left on sitting on the top, the underlying infrastructure still remains on the centralized cloud providers. All right, guys, that about wraps up this discussion. I hope this was valuable to you. It was most definitely valuable to me to dig into what the notion of fully on chain means. The big takeaway I think here is that nothing takes place within internet computer without overall blockchain participation and blockchain consensus. And I do think uh, there, there will be some value in projects such as Aleph.im. Um, and I think more of them will pop up um, such as Flux. Flux is another big one where you can run your own node. But, but keep in mind, these are piece of the solution for decentralization. Whereas internet computer represents an entire complete network based on decentralized principles. And the fact that you need NLF.IM for Ethereum or for Solana or for the Binance Smart Chain Network lets you know that ICP is leaps and bounds ahead of the competition. So I will catch you on the next one. If you extracted any value from this, feel free to like and subscribe. I'm gonna be putting out loads of content just like this. And to my ICP elites and citizens of Coin Nation, peace.